that if you're taking images from the internet then uh, there may well be copyright issues and you're going to need to consider that. However, I'm going to take a photograph of some paving slabs and um, manipulate that to create a tileable texture that I'm going to use alongside the wall that we created in the last week or so. So first thing I did, I looked for weathered concrete pavement I looked in Flickr, I looked in Google, Google Images, um, and had a good dig around. What was what was I looking for? I was looking for an image like this, um, an image that had a definite edge to the paving, something that was a little bit weathered, um, something that I could repeat up quite easily. I wasn't too bothered about the fact that uh, the perspective on this wasn't quite right. If it's really bad like this, you're not going to be able to use it, but um, basically an overhead shot should be okay. We're going to adjust the perspective to get something that looks right. Once I'd found that, um, I went to the image and downloaded it and loaded it up into GIMP. So here's that image that I downloaded. The first thing that I did was to use the crop tool so select the part of the image that I was interested in and cropped to the selection. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to square this up using the perspective tool in GIMP. So we just zoom in a little bit there. Um, the perspective tool is very useful. Um, click on your image and you'll get this transform. It will allow you, let me just zoom out a little bit, It'll allow you to move these handles to square up the image. So if you look at what's happening now, if I move this handle, I can now start to move the right hand edge so that it's actually vertical. And I can move the bottom of that up and around. And I can start to square that image up. Now that, that takes a little bit of fiddling around, but basically um, what we're looking to end up with is something that looks like this. And you'll see that I've manipulated the image, and I've applied this a number of times, but I've manipulated the image to a point where the single slab is now rectangular, and I can ensure that it's rectangular by using the select tool and selecting the rectangle within the mortar joint of that slab. And now what I can do is I can crop that and that gives us the first part of our tileable so, texture. I've got my starting image, I've made it as square as I can. What I'm going to do is I'm going to resize this because if we just look up here at the canvas size it's not power of two so it's not going to make a great texture. So I'm going to make this 512 by 512 and I'm not going to resize the layer I'm going to resize that afterwards so if I just resize that image you can see that I've got the image and then I've got the actual canvas behind there so now I'm going to resize that layer and I'll just do it by hand so just pick up the corner a bit slow pick up that corner and resize that image so it fits nicely on that canvas. So the width and height of that is now 512 by 512 and I've rescaled it. You'll notice it's gone a bit blurred but don't worry about that because we're going to resize it again now. We're going to resize it back to exactly one quarter of our canvas. So click on the resize but this time change it to percent and it's going to be 50% of the height and 50% of the width and hit scale. So now we've got our original image looks about right because it's scaled back down again at about one quarter or exactly one quarter of our canvas. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this we're going to create new layers and we're going to rotate this around those layers. So if I duplicate my layer I can now 
rotate this layer through 90 degrees. Okay, do that rotation and I can also move that across to the right and you'll see that now that I can fit those two together and it's rotated and we've got a slightly different pattern that's fine um, I'll do the same thing again so duplicate the layer I'm going to rotate that 390 degrees so select that rotate it 390 hit rotate and and move that down so once I've done that four times I'll have my four images so do that once more so duplicate layer rotate that new layer through 90 okay and just move that into place so you can see that I've got a reasonably good looking image however if I was to now um, scale this and use this as a texture and replicate it lots of times what we'd see is we would see this repeating pattern so what we're going to do is we're going to take out some of these features to make it a little less repeating so what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove these using the clone tool. So the first thing to do is to select the original layer. So select that layer and I'm going to clone using that as a source. So I'm going to press control and say this is going to be the source layer. Then I'm going to move on to my next layer. And I'm going to get rid of these major features or some of these major features on each layer so that it doesn't look like it's been cloned. So select the layer and then using the clone tool, this one's the most obvious one, just paint over it. I'll paint over that one and probably that one. Don't change the edges of the image because that's our thing that's got a butt up to the next one. We repeat it as a texture. But you can see I've changed some of those blemishes. I'm gonna do the same on this one. This is the one that, this large one here is the one that kind of looks like it's been repeated of managed to do that pretty much the same so I get rid of a couple more and then on the final one get rid of this large one again and I'll leave those two but get rid of that one so so now I've got something that isn't nearly as repeated it's not going to come out as a repeated pattern so the next step is to save that as a PNG so export that and I'll call mine paving set.png and export it. And that now gives us our repeatable texture. And I'll just show you the end of that, the finished article in Blender.